thrilled to introduce to you all Executive Director Stephanie Richardson. Stephanie was featured in our June meeting planner, sharing a brief glimpse into her 25 contacts per week strategy to help maintain consistency. And I am so excited that she's agreed to partner with us today to give you even more details of this system and to share with you how she coaches her team to use the system in their business. So Stephanie, without further ado, thank you for joining us. I cannot wait to hear more about your system. And Stephanie's on the right in the photo. <laughs> Everybody knew that. But <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie, your daughter is getting more beautiful all the time and growing up so fast. Uh, her mother. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. Well, a right. few years ago, are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so a few years ago, when it seemed I was needing to work harder for bookings, I started tracking my numbers to see what I needed to get the results that I wanted. And although the home office recommendation of three contacts a day is a good starting point, it wasn't getting my show schedule to the consistent two per week or eight per month that I really wanted. So I decided to track the numbers to see the actual numbers I needed to make to get those two shows a week. And I found that 25 contacts a week instead of 15, so five a day for five days out of the week, gave me the results that I needed. When I track these contacts, they can be from out and about, Facebook messages or green dot messages on Facebook, email, text, phone, or in person. I only count the contacts where there's a two-way conversation. So if they respond with a yes or a no, if they don't respond, then I don't count them as a contact. I also don't count people I talk to at a party that night as contacts. So if I have 12 guests, at an in-home party, I don't count that as 12 contacts. These are all contacts I make outside of shows. Now, if I follow up a few days later after the party and a lead from the show talks to me and they respond, then I count that as a contact. So what type of contacts am I making? Well, I'm asking about booking a show. I'm asking about the opportunity. I might be helping a customer with a return or helping them with a product question or a recipe question, or the contact may be a customer purchasing a product, just to name some examples. So you may wonder how many attempts do you have to make to actually get a response from 25 contacts. Well, remember, I only count them if there is a response and I talk to someone. So I don't actually track how many attempts I make, but from watching some team members who track attempts as well as those that they've reached, it really varies from consultant to consultant. Just know that you're going to need to reach out to way more than 25 people to get 25 responses. I would say on average 35 to 45. For some of you, it will be fewer, and for some, it will be more. You may also wonder, what do I say when making those contacts? Well, let's say you have a customer who reaches out to you about a product question. Last week, I had a customer on a Facebook party who asked me about the guarantee on a product. She even took a picture of her three most beloved stones and posted it. I sent her a private message and told her that she obviously was a fan of our product and asked her what she loved most about her stoneware. I asked her, since she was such a huge fan, would she be interested in having a Facebook party and getting double free products this month? So guess what? She's having her own Facebook party. Of course, I also asked her about joining the business, since she loves the product so much, and I added her to my Thinking About It group on Facebook, which is where I add anyone who has expressed interest in the business, but isn't quite ready to join yet. Her party starts this Friday, and obviously we're going to talk about the kit credit for her as a host benefit. So let's say you have a customer who asks you to follow up with them this summer. 
I would reach out, usually by text or Facebook Messenger, and say something like, Hi, Beth, I want to commit to follow up with you this month as you ask me to contact you about a summer party. The June special is insane with double free products, and I'm so excited to help you take advantage of it. Would you like an in-home or a Facebook party? I track my contacts in a spiral notebook. Some of my team members track them in an Excel file. So what do I put in the spiral notebook? I write down the date, the person's name, and notes about each contact. At the end of the week, I tally the number of contacts, how many bookings did I get that week, and the number of consultants who joined. What this does is this helps me look back at patterns and see if what I'm doing is giving me the results that I want. If I'm not getting the results that I want, then usually I either need to increase my number of contacts and or tweak what I'm saying to make it more appealing. My goal is to book two shows from these outside contacts each week. Just think about it. If you do that, that's eight shows a month you're adding to your calendar. This is a system that I teach my leaders and anyone in director bound training. When they are in director bound, they send me their contacts weekly. What they usually do is take a picture and send it to me, and they have to meet the number required that week to stay in the program. So we start off with 15, and we meet that goal for a few weeks, and then we move up to 20 contacts, and we meet that goal for a few weeks, and then we move to 25 contacts. Doing that has propelled many consultants' businesses forward and has helped them increase their show schedule, their sales, and promote to director as a result. So just like the home office will pilot a new idea, about a year and a half ago, I decided to pilot a new tracking system with some top performing directors on our team. A couple of us had been on an outside training call with another group who trains direct sellers, and the topic was on recruiting. One of the action steps suggested was to track your recruit leads each month. Now, when you first hear that, you may think about a rolling type contact list from days of old, where you write down the name of every potential recruit lead, but this is not your mama's rolling contact list. What's different about this system is that you have a goal to talk to a specific number of recruit leads each month and to ask that number of people about joining. We decided to make a tracking sheet that focused on talking with 20 recruit leads a month. Why 20? Because we know statistically that about 1 in 10 will usually say yes. So when you talk to 20, you're more than likely going to have two join. So who do you put on this list? Well, obviously, every single host, customers that you're following up with where it wasn't a good time in the past, customers from virtual shows and cooking shows, and I put them on there when they are a serious lead. Again, it's like with my booking contacts. I don't count every single customer I ask at a show, but I do count every customer with whom I have a serious conversation about the business. You have one tracking sheet for the month. I've trained my leadership team and now my personal team that a good goal to have is to break it down and talk with five people per week for a total of 20. That seems manageable. So we've been focused on reaching 20 each month. On my leadership training calls, we, myself included, either post or hold up our tracking sheet, so there's accountability to see how many names we have on the list so far for the month. We are determined to fill up that sheet every month. There have been some months when I've gotten down to the last couple of days of the month and had four open spaces, and I was determined to ask four people to fill up my sheet. What this does is it increases your odds of sponsoring someone because you're asking more people. So I piloted this system with some top performing directors, and as a result, 
Recruiting skyrocketed for those leaders who were tracking their leads. I was convinced that I needed to teach the entire leadership team about it, so I did. We also train about the system on our director bound calls, and those participating have to send in their tracking sheets with five names each week added to the sheet once we introduce the sheet. I keep a notebook with these monthly sheets with my leads and notes. And the beauty of that is each month when there's a new promotion that's introduced, I have a list of past leads whom I can contact about the newest promotion. It has allowed me to keep up with my leads and not run the risk of forgetting to reach out to someone. So you may wonder, how successful is this system? I asked two of our newest directors, Jaslyn Evans and Caitlin North, to share how this system has impacted their businesses. Jaslyn, who is a single mom who works full time and has two girls, said, before I started the 25 contact system, I really felt like I was scrambling to get enough parties to be where I wanted each month. I was talking to people, but there wasn't consistency, and that has made all the difference. I have seven to start in June, seven parties that is, and I have room for a couple of others. My sales were running about 2,000 to 2,400, and this month, this is speaking of May, I submitted over 3,300 and I have $1,200 unsubmitted. That's double where I was before. It has made a huge difference in my business and my success. Writing it down and being held accountable makes me stay on top of it and also has helped me change my thinking. I'm always thinking of new people I can talk to and ways to expand my circle and my business. I work to make the contacts and follow up. Writing it down also has helped me track those maybes to get back to. So you may wonder, how does Dablin squeeze all this in, working a full-time job, being a single mom, and having two girls? Dablin makes contacts in the mornings before work or in the evenings after the kids have settled in after dinner and homework. He said, it was easy when I got more comfortable with it in general. It was hard at first because I was worried and I had all those negative thoughts about being a bother or sounding dumb, <laughs> but the more I did it, the easier and more natural it became. At first, having help with what to say was huge. It helped me get past those negative thoughts because I knew others had used the same words and were having the kind of success I wanted. Now it's easy to wing it. Caitlin, who works full-time and has two kids, said, Before I started writing down my contacts, I was doing everything by memory and that made it hard to keep track, and I found people slipping through the cracks. Writing them down held me accountable and helped me visually see how many people I was talking to and what I was spending my time talking about. After looking at my March contacts, I realized I wasn't sharing the business opportunity enough, and I made sure to share it more in April, and that resulted in four recruits followed by five more personal recruits in May, most of which were follow-ups I may have forgotten about had I not written it down. I started keeping my contacts color-coordinated, pink for sharing the opportunity, yellow for hosting opportunities, and I would highlight my response in green, green means go, for booking and my yeses. I would contact people that were on Facebook and engaged in my posts. I found it easy to make the 25 contacts, and most weeks I was actually doing 50. Not to mention all the parties I'd been chatting with people in, too. I work full time and have two kids, so to say I'm busy is an understatement. At first, I thought making 25 contacts seemed impossible, but I had no idea how I would be able to have a two way conversation with that many people. But once I started, I found it really wasn't that hard at all. Most weeks, I have 35 to 50 contacts. If I can do it, anyone can do it. I'm already on the phone while my kids are watching TV or when I'm at work and it's slow or in the bath. 
she laughs about that. So I just take advantage of my time. And it took me about two weeks with screenshots back and forth with my director to get down the verbiage and make it my own. I'd like to share that Caitlin's sales went from $1,539 in sales and four shows to $3,429 in sales and seven shows in March. That's when she started Director Bounce. So she went from $1,500 to $3,400. And then last month she sold $6,605 and had 13 shows. That's what has happened with her business as a result. What I want to challenge you to do is make it the same in each category. 25 contacts per week and 25 recruiting contacts per month. Just imagine what will happen when you and your team members are intentional about reaching these numbers. Your team will have more shows with stronger show schedules and recruiting will increase on your team. Woo! Give her Awesome job. So if you have a question for Stephanie, please use the raise hand feature on your screen. After you raise your hand, we'll call on you and then unmute your line. And I see we've got a few up already. So, um, Laura, I'm going to unmute you. It looks like you've got a question. You are no. unmuted. No, I'm automatic. Oh, goodness. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Anya, I'm going to unmute you. Anya, come back. Come back. Okay, how about Bonnie? Bonnie, are you on a Mac or do you have a question? I'm on a Mac, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jennifer Courtney, I've got you unmuted. Do you have a question? I have a Mac. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Okay, let me look at the question. Dina, Dina Perry. Yep. Dina, are you oh. unmuted? No, I don't have a question, and I have my hand down, and I'm on a Mac. <laughs> All, All right, right then. All right, I see Tracy. Tracy or Kate? Yeah. Yes. Oh, Tracy, I can't get you unmuted though. Are you self muted? So if you can unmute yourself, Tracy, you can ask the question if you have one. <laughs> All right, let's try Wendy. Okay, Wendy, you are unmuted. Wendy Blank, do you have a question? Nope, I'm on a Mac and I'm my hand is down. All right. <laughs> well, imagine what it would be like, Tasha, if everyone was on a Mac. Right? <laughs> <laughs> what we're doing. There's two more. There's a question and a no. We can also type in a question. Yeah, I got that. You might have to do that going forward. Christina Alvin, <laughs> do you have a question? I do have a question. Yay! Yay! I don't know if I did. Take me. <laughs> um, go ahead and ask your question. Okay, so today I am doing some of my customer care calls on a show that just got submitted. So my question to you is these 25 contacts a week, uh, is that including all your customer care calls or do you have your own system for that? Yes, that is including customer care, and I follow the 222 model. Two days after the party, two weeks after the party, and two months after the party. I reach out to them. Perfect. I've been doing the same thing, so I just wanted to make sure. Yes. Thank you. Awesome training today. Wonderful. I love Thank everyone you. coming on here. Thanks, Christina. Thank Great question. Okay, we've got some questions that popped up in the question pane, so I'm going to go ahead and go that route. Um, Melissa Lake would like, like to know, is there a document with all of this information? I love it and will not remember all of it. And I can tell you, Melissa, the recording of this will be available on Consultants Corner under the Leader Resource Center for the Nationwide Leader Calls as soon as possible. You'll be able to go back and watch the replay and reference it as frequently as you'd like and take all the notes that you'd like. Um, I, I hopped back. Julia Kobe had asked us to go back to see the one that lists the topics, and so that's up there right now in case anyone wants to do a quick screen grab of that. Faith Wessel would like to know, um, 
Stephanie, how receptive was your team to this at first? Well, I think you're going to find it varies. Your consultants who are not as engaged in the business are not going to be the people that are going to be willing to do this. It's really going to be the people who want more from their business, who have a bigger goal and more drive that want to do it. It's going to be your leaders. It's going to be your uh, potential leaders. Those are the ones that are going to be more likely to do that. Uh, Melody Govig has a question that kind of goes hand in hand, in hand with Faith's question. Stephanie, did you challenge your entire director team when you started out doing this? With the recruiting part, I piloted with a small group and then challenged the entire team, yes. And the entire director team has been trained on the 25 contacts, yes. Okay. And one last question. Cindy Weber wants to know, Stephanie, do you have a go-to method for reaching out first? Is it a phone call, a text, a direct message on Facebook? Maybe tell them what gets you the best response. You know, I find that it varies, but I think that people check their text messages faster than they check anything else typically. And I find that when I'm working with a cooking show host, even I'll say when we're talking about inviting don't you think people check their text messages faster than anything and they always agree with me? So I feel like that that's kind of the standard go-to way to start. Just a couple of days ago, I went through my Facebook friends list and started sending out some messages, private messages to people, telling them about the YouTube special and how amazing it is. And these were a lot of past customers and hosts. So I also do private messages as well. I booked two shows from that, from doing that the other evening, Monday night. So those are probably the best, the, those primary ways that I find I get the best results. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Stephanie. That was a great training. And I'd like to remind all of you, like I said before, that the replay of today's webinar will be posted on Consultants Corner under the Training and Resources page as soon as we can possibly get it up for you so that you can listen to this amazing training again and take it and share it with your team right away. So thanks again, Stephanie, for joining us. And with that, I'm going to turn it back to Doreen. Oh, 